When should parents be able to say no to vaccines for their kids? I'm Adrian Pedersen today on Upfront. The vaccine debate, a move to eliminate the personal opt out for parents. Next, who should decide? I'll ask Assembly Minority Leader Gordon Hintz of Oshkosh and Republican Representative Jeremy Thiesfeld of Fond du Lac. Then, digging in. I'm going to fight like hell for Medicaid expansion. None of us ran on an expansion of welfare. Uh, Tony Evers did. The fight over the Medicaid expansion and high level meetings on Foxconn. Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with your host, Adrian Pedersen. Thank you for joining us. I'm Adrian Pedersen, and this is Upfront. We're facing the most serious outbreak of measles in the United States in almost 20 years. People have measles in 22 states. At this point, Wisconsin isn't one of them. But health officials have said a case is really only a plane ride away. State law allows parents to seek exemptions from vaccines for their children for medical, religious, or personal reasons. Currently, 17 states allow the personal exemption, but now there's a new bill here in Wisconsin to end it. That's why we're talking with the sponsor of the bill, Democratic Assembly Minority Leader Gordon Hintz of Oshkosh and Republican Representative Jeremy Thiesfeld of Fond du Lac. So thank you both for being here. Happy to be here. Representative Hintz, let's start with you. Why did you introduce this bill? Well, state government has a responsibility first and foremost to keeping the public safe. That's not just preventing, um, you know, criminals or, you know, uh, theft or other things, but also looking out for public health. And we've seen our trends going in the wrong direction. Uh, we're out of the mainstream. The majority of states don't have this personal waiver. And 90% of the kids that are getting a waiver from getting vaccinated um, are using the personal exemption. So public health advocates, doctors, and other groups have said the number one thing we can do to increase the vaccination rate and get people to protect themselves and others uh, is getting rid of the personal waiver. And you don't agree with us. Well, let me, let me put it this way. Let's put a qualifying statement out front. Uh, neither Gordon or I are physicians, not that I'm aware of anyway. Um, and I can't speak for him, but I would not call myself an expert on this particular issue. Uh, but I am not anti-vaccination. Um, my wife and I, God's blessed us with four children. Each and every one of them received their full complement of vaccinations. My wife is vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. I have 10 brothers and sisters who are all vaccinated. Uh, so this isn't a case where I don't believe that vaccination is a good idea. I do, and I would encourage parents that they should do that. Uh, but on the other hand, I'm not anti-vaccination, but I am pro-parental rights and responsibility. Uh, and one of the hallmarks of our medical society is informed cons consent and being able to control your own health care decisions. And I believe this is going the wrong direction. We already have taken too much responsibility away from parents. Uh, there are few things more sacred than being able to control your own health care. And I think this is just a step too far. And I want to give you a chance to respond to that. Well, I mean, the problem is that we are reintroducing diseases that have been largely eliminated. And what folks have to remember is um, one of the biggest medical successes of the 20th century was the fact that we were able to eliminate polio, um, you know, measles, mumps, chickenpox, largely because of the social compact of getting people to have herd immunity and making sure that they were vaccinated. The fact that in 2019 we're seeing an outbreak around the country of measles, a disease that killed 110,000 people around the world in uh, 2017 is something of concern. You don't just get vaccinated for yourself. You get vaccinated for others, especially those that can't. Uh, babies, um, people whose immune systems are compromised and simply can't get vaccinated. And we are seeing pockets around the state of as low as 70%. And given how people travel, interact, go around the world, uh, there's an interconnectedness that really makes it actually far more risky and infectious um, in terms of the risk than we had in other places. We're just pushing forward a bill that is mainstream in other states where they have higher compliance with vaccination rates and uh, you know, it's the right thing to do. What do you think about the theory that, Representative, it's a parent's choice, but then not getting your child vaccinated is really possibly making a choice for another person's child? Well, as a parent, my responsibility is toward my own children. And if I feel that something is going to negatively impact my child uh, in terms of a medical decision, I ought to be able to maintain that right to do that and to make that decision. 
uh, to have the government come in and force me to put something in my body or in my ch child's body that I believe to be harmful, particularly because these, these vaccinations are kind of one size fits all. There, there really isn't any kind of relative factor taken into this. It's, you know, if you're a baby or if you're an adult, largely it's handled the same way in terms of the dosage. So uh, there are too many variables involved for us to just look at it uh, as a requirement that everybody needs to do this. And predominantly, when I have had families come in and talk with me about this particular situation, uh, they'll come in to me and tell me the stories of how they have been characterized as uncaring, uneducated, uh, they're labeled as anti-vaxxers and things like that, and nothing further from the truth could be the case. I mean, these are some of the these are, are people. some examples of, of personal reasons to not get your child vaccinated if it's not religious and it's not medical? Uh, they, w they will have looked at what they believe is the science of it and have determined that they don't think that's the right direction to go. They maybe have a family history possibly where there's a medical situation uh, that caused a problem. Uh, but w what I was getting back to is that these people are very well studied on this stuff. Um, doctors, you know, I said I'm not a doctor. But when these people come in and talk to me, they know way more about this stuff than I do. And for me to be able to tell them that you are forced to get this, even though you have this vast knowledge on this, I suspect some of these families know more about this stuff than their doctors do. You've tried this bill before. Well, we introduced Why do it, it again? Well, we introduced it in the past because we saw that Wisconsin has twice the rate nationally of ch children not being vaccinated. Um, this bill doesn't say that you have to get vaccinated. It says that we're not going to allow you to risk the lives and public health of individuals in child care centers and our schools uh, if you're not going to get vaccinated. And I think that's the key distinction. Um, look, I'm, my wife and I are expecting a, a new baby boy in a few weeks, and we've got a two-year-old. Uh, the fact that we have to say, well, well, we can't go to a children's museum or a public library because we're increasingly at risk um, is something that's concerning. We're talking about the reintroduction of diseases that we had largely eliminated because people are making this individual choice. We eliminated polio because society got together and vaccinated. The science is overwhelmingly supportive. We had 100 doctors and family physicians in Madison on Wednesday, and their number one ask was to eliminate the personal exemption waiver because that is why we're seeing these increased numbers of people that are putting people's lives and public health at risk because of their decisions. And I realize that it's complicated. I know people, and I've talked to some of these people as well, um, but part of our obligation, again, is to keep the public safe. Um, we're going to see an increase in the number of kids getting vaccinated one of two ways. We're either going to proactively pass this bill or we're going to have a measles outbreak. And I guarantee you parents are going to be flocking to get vaccines when their kids are at risk. So you say if this bill doesn't pass, we will have a measles outbreak. It's only a matter of time. And when that happens, like it's happened in other states, 22, record number, it's only proliferating, those parents will go get their kids vaccinated right away. So I don't want to wait for that to happen. Um, we've got good bipartisan support because I think people recognize that um, the science is there, that public health is at risk, and you don't just get vaccinated for yourself, you get vaccinated for the good of everybody. Do you think it's that serious in terms of if... if no, I, Kids don't, I don't get vaccinated. There will be an outbreak here. You know, we, we've had the or the term was mentioned earlier about herd immunity. When vaccinations first started back in the 50s and 60s, uh, the herd immune the, the herd immunity factor was considered to be somewhere in the area of 55 percent. Well, now we're up to 95 percent because as the years have gone by, they've realized, oh, this doesn't seem to be enough. That just hints to the fact that this is. While I agree with the science, and I think that. The, the benefits do outweigh the risks. I'm not going to make judgments on other parents who have studied the issue and feel differently than I do. Are you talking to any of the medical groups who are endorsing this? Um, the doctors were in my office the other day at uh, Capitol as well, uh, and I've heard from them in the past as well. And the, the, the impression is, is that all doctors agree on this. They don't. You know, most of them do, certainly. Uh, but they all do not. I have talked with doctors who have had vaccination issues with their own children and have their doubts. Uh, but once again, just to stress the fact that this is, this is an imperfect process. It's better than it used to be. And I, I, I would propose to Gordon here that I would be happy to play a part of a, a public, uh, 
public campaign to increase, uh, do public service announcements to increase the percentage that there is out there, because I think it is important to do this. Are you this. interested in that? Well, look, I mean, when I introduced the bill three years ago, it really was about raising awareness, um, you know, getting this issue that we're heading in the wrong direction, our numbers are still high. I think the important thing for this bill is Let's get a public hearing. Um, let's raise the issues. Let's get reaffirm, reeducate, do what we need to do to encourage, incentivize, um, and then hopefully move forward. Because I think if people understand the seriousness of this, um, you know, we'll get action on it. But I think the other benefit of that is the headlines, the press, the attention, the awareness that can come out of that. Um, I certainly support as much education as possible. But at the end of the day, you know, if we're going to reverse the decline, if we're going to protect those who can't protect themselves, uh, we need to move forward and, and close this uh, personal exemption. Thank you both for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Next, the governor vows to fight like hell for a Medicaid expansion, but Assembly Republicans vow not to give an inch. Could the state Senate offer any path to compromise? And later, we'll look at plans to expand Milwaukee's streetcar ahead of the city's big turn in the national spotlights. Upfront, brought to you by the American Transmission Company.